What's going on YouTube? Today we got a customer truck in here. It's a B.O. Jackson truck and we're fixing to show you guys how to do an overhead on a Detroit 60 Series. We got a super special guest in the house today. You guys are not going to want to miss it. Check it out. This is old man in the country that I know. No money in what he used to grow. No, he don't care what people think. Mississippi. All right, guys. Like I say, well, I told you we got a special guest, and it's Mr. Matthew Cox, and he's going to talk to you about what all kind of tools you're going to need, and we're going to get after it. What's up, guys and girls? Probably uh, Clay's got me down here today. We're going to do a '60 series Detroit diesel uh, overhead. We're going to set the intakes, exhaust valves, and the uh, the jakes on it. Just going to go over real quick a few things you might need. Some of them you might not need, who knows. Uh, what you're gonna need is a feeler gauge set. Um, good quality, preferably. I like, I prefer the individual ones over the standard. You get all of them, there's 20 of them on one. I don't really like those that much, but personal preference. Uh, you're gonna need an injector height tool for these uh, N2 injectors in these 60 series. Um, I've got some, uh, adjustment tools here for the jam nuts and then setting your rockers and everything on that. Um, you're also going to need a good torque wrench for when you put your overheads and your jake brakes back on. You'll have to torque those back to spec. Um, you're going to need at least a 3 8 breaker bar or ratchet to pull your jake brake bolts out to get your jake brakes off. And you're going to need a uh, 36 millimeter or inch and 7 16 socket and ratchet to bar the engine over as you're going through your overhead sets. And if you've got two piece jake brakes, you're going to need a set of non jake brake rocker shaft bolts. Or you can use the short jake brake bolts and you'll have to make some uh, spacers for it. But we'll show you how we use that here just shortly. Also, there's a bunch of different ways you can do these 60 series. I prefer the circle of life method. I still use a cheat sheet. You can use the companion cylinders and there's a couple other different ways you can do it. This is just the way I prefer to do it. All right, guys, you see what he's gonna use. So we're gonna show you how it's done. Y'all take a look.
Just jake brake solenoid wires off. always the hardest to get to one that's the tightest. Uh-huh. Every time. Pretty bad, ain't it? Not too shabby. This one's where it is. I'm gonna put a ratchet on it. Let snap on break him loose? Always. Really? Uh, it usually won't break those loose. At least torque the 90. It'll do about three of them on a full charge battery. Best and good tools. That's it. Keeps the broke knuckles down to a minimum. chart here and the way this chart works is whichever intake valve starts moving down in the open position um, is what this chart references as far as your sets um, we've got our ratchet and socket on the accessory drive on the front transmissions in neutral just gonna bar this over engine over and see which intakes Valve start moving. Right 
six foot down, didn't it? I passed it. So I'll come back around the next one. Two intakes just started moving down in the open position. It doesn't take much to move them. We'll go to our chart here. Intake, intake two starts. We're gonna set all our valves on cylinder number five. Set our injector on cylinder number three. Number three injector taking our injector height tool and you'll have to find it down in there but there's a little hole on the injector crab that that tool sits in and then what you want to do is you just want that that block on that tool to just barely drag the top of that uh, injector spring and this one's just a hair tall. So what we're gonna do is adjust it. Nine sixteenths in wrench. Alvin wrench to hold it. You know, what we're gonna do is back that nut off. We're gonna turn our injector down just until just until we feel slight drag on the bottom of that height tool right there. Alright. So now we're gonna pull our tool out. We'll lock this injector down. Make sure to hold our jam nut. Number three is set on the injector. Go to number five. Sorry about the shakiness, guys. I'm trying to balance on a tire over here. Number five. You can do this in any order you want to do as long as you get your own pattern down and stay consistent. You set the injector first and then go set your intakes and exhaust or set your valves first and then set your injectors however you want to do it. It's all personal preference. It's as long as you get in a rhythm and stay in a rhythm. Another thing I didn't do on this injector that I normally do is I will uh, I'll take mark a paint it. I'll take a paint pen and mark everything I do. So that way I know that one's already been set. Some of the older guys give me crap about that, but again, personal preference and what works for you. Now I've got a eight thousandths feeler gauge. And we're gonna go to cylinder number five, intake. If I was a betting man, I'd say this intake's tight. It is, you can't move it. Yeah, it's not as tight as I thought it was. But it's still tighter than I like. Most times, setting an overhead, you want to do it when the engine is cold. Um, because when metal gets hot, it expands and changes. So if you set your overhead when it's cold, then it allows for the expansion of the metal at operating temperature. Now this is something I cannot tell you, I cannot teach you. There's no way for me to tell you what is right or wrong without actually feeling 
and, and checking the feel on this feeder gauge. This feeder gauge between the top of your injector stem, or the, your valve stem, excuse me, and your tap it on your rocker arm. Um, some manufacturers recommend a certain inch pound torque spec on your jam nuts. Cummins, I think, in the newer engines do. But as a general rule, slight drag on your feeder gauge is what you want on any of your overhead sets. Um, and that's what we've got here, just very little drag on the feeder gauge. It's not sliding in and out too loose. It's not hard to get in and out. It's just, just right. That is one thing that nobody can teach you without actually feeling it yourself. So we've got two intakes to set. I'll move it around here to the back side. If I can see it, find it. I think I'm on it, but it's this one's tighter. Uh, we'll loosen that dude up. And it will set it the same way. Check number five, exhaust. This one just did. As I set, mark those two for my exhaust, and then I'll just mark the top of the intakes. The way I know they're done. All right, five and three. Bar this thing around. I will for sure. coming around. Put your wrench in there while you're boring it around. Started going down right there, number four. So with number four intake going down, we're going to valves on number three and number six injector. And of 
course, number six is a, to a get fun to. one to get to up under the cow of these Coronados and stuff. in there. Yep. Sometimes, every once in a while, I'll get lucky and can find it, but I'm not having that much luck today. Not having that much luck today. Uh, he's laid the uh, oil rags all over everything to keep any contaminants from getting out while he has to crawl under there. Whoever invented spring clamps, I want to meet in a dark alley. Stuff you have to go through, huh? Comes with the territory. <laughs> barely drag the bottom of that height tool on the top of your uh, injector spring is all you want and we'll lock her down there well the good news is you got the worst one out of the way now that is true mark our injector Come up here and set our valves on number three. series Detroit's. If you do the recommended mileage interval for your overheads, intake valves will almost always be tight. Your exhaust may or may not be, depending on how well it was set at the last overhead and there's any type of wear going on with any of the valve train components. All right, that one's set at 8,000. Check this one as well. Get that harness out of the way. It's tight also.
tighter than I prefer. Another thing I was gonna mention in this video, some of you that don't know, most, not all, but most inline diesel engines firing order. Old man told me years ago how to remember it, and it's probably not politically correct. Clay probably knows where I'm going with this. But the firing order of most inline diesel engines is 153624 15 36 24 15 too young 36 too old 24 just right <laughs> that is one thing that has stuck with me through all the years is the fire and order of inline six cylinder diesel engines All right, so we did everything on number three. We'll mark those. I think about wipe my mark off. All right, looking for number one intake valves just start moving down in the open position. It just started down right there. So now, number one down. I'm gonna go to number six valves and number two injectors. So if you start with your injector, stay with your injector. That's the way I do it. As, as long as, like I said earlier, as long as you find a rhythm and stay with it. Do the same, do it the same sequence every time. That way you get, especially for younger guys coming up through the ranks and stuff, um, it's, it's a helpful tool for them that I try to instill all the guys that I train or oversee or whatever, that pick a way that's comfortable for you to do it and do them all that way. Yeah. Um, less, if you do every one exactly the same, there's less chances for screw-ups or leaving something loose or whatever. Alright, so we're going to go to number two injector. we got to find that little hole down in there on the injector, buddy. this adjuster same way as we did just slight drag they've all been about the same Well, the 
baseball in the morning. Good old number six. On these 60 series engines, your intake and exhaust valve blast settings and your injector height on the D-Deck 4 and older, if the sticker is still there, will be on the side of the valve cover. It's printed on the Detroit label if it is still present on the engine. This one, I happen to have a connection to be able to pull it up by engine serial number at Detroit. And I got the valve lash specs that way. Having connections is always a good thing. Especially in this industry. Especially in this industry. You never know when you're going to be working on something on the side of the road at 4 o'clock in the morning. You need to call somebody. You need to call somebody. But you know, most of the guys that does this, they don't care a bit in the world to, to help another you know guy out. That's what's good. Now, the company they work for may not agree with that, but the actual people doing the work seem to always be willing to help each other out. most most diesel technicians i've met through the years have always been willing to to help each other i know it's right there somewhere just can't see it because that injector's in my way
are you looking for right there? Standing on these drag links all these years. There's a number. The guy that taught me how to do that on the feeder gauge, he said it feels about like pushing a socket into a plug. That's that's pretty close. That's that's probably the best way I could describe it. He said like he was gonna plug in a clock or something like that, you know, about the way the plug yep. feels going in. That's that's probably about the closest analogy I've heard, but that's about what you're looking for. I'd say he was old school. Yeah. You know. All right. Well, that's number two done.
shadows in her. Pretty bad out on it. Yeah, it was. Alright, now we'll be looking for number three and take the start to move, set number four valves and number one and two.
getting a little looser than I wanted it to be. I'm looking for is the number six intake starts to move set the number one valve number five injector for this one too. Oh, oh, maybe not. I'm nervous, I'm not used to being on camera. Stage fright, huh? Yeah, got a little stage fright. Two ways, it ain't run better or worse. That's right. <laughs> takes this is just the smallest turn on one of these to go from too loose to too tight this is definitely a finesse sport mm -hmm. no going caveman style up here uh -uh. It's expensive.
lot of times if you set your feeler gauge to the right feel and you tighten this jam nut up and you check it, it's looser than you want. So you have to learn to set them just a hair tighter than you like because when that jam, when you lock that jam nut down, it's gonna naturally pull that Mm. that tap it up just a little bit so you get to train yourself to compensate for that in your field as well. I've rubbed about half my marks off already, so that happens. And what I always like to do is I like to bar my engine back over. Um, that was the last set. We'll bar it back around till number two. Another thing I can show you on here too, on these 60 series, that is your intake roller for your intake rocker shaft. You can just feel that with your fingers while you're barring the engine around. And you can feel it when it starts to open that intake valve. Because those exhaust coming back up and closing will play tricks on your eyes sometimes. It just started moving right there. And that's all you're looking for on that. So with two intake just opening, we should have already set our valves on number five. Our injector on number three. You can actually, I don't know how well the camera will pick that up. You can see it moving. But you can see in here your exhaust moving and then your intake move just that much. One other tip I always tell everybody when you get done with everything on your overhead, it only takes a minute. Take your wrench, go back over every adjuster on your overhead. Just make sure they're all tight. Make sure you didn't miss one or get one quite tight enough or whatever. Only takes a minute to do, could save you a problem 20 miles up the road. Always better to be safe and so on. Like, we catch a lot of slack from people. They give us crappy comments because we put a torque wrench on all of our lug nuts. Well, here's the deal about the lug nuts, and that's for another video. It's 80,000 pounds rolling down the road. Them lug nuts are holding up. We're sat riding down the highway beside your family, my family, their family. Well, that's what I tell the guys that work for me. I said, would you trade your wife, her life, or your kid's life for 15 minutes? I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. 
So it takes 15 minutes to torque all the loads. It's worth it to me just to, for the peace of mind, you know. Yep. Because I would never want one of my trucks to have something like that happen or a, even a customer truck that left the shop, you know. Like I don't know how I could sleep at night knowing that because of my laziness or neglect, you know, I killed somebody. Yep, that's exactly right. You know, Bearded CB says it best in every one of his videos, shop safety is as important as gun safety. You know? That's exactly right. All right, guys, we've got the chart complete. Everything's tightened down, and everything looks good here. So we're going to move to the next step. Lessons with Matthew. Come on up. done that a few times. Once or twice. That's a thing or get her in it. Can be. Bobby's in back dirty. No wipe off. Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna torque these 90 foot pounds per detour specs. Challenge to do there. Didn't get that one. I was going to do that more ratchet, but oh well, I'll do it with this. Bust my knuckles here.
intake starts. When it says set five valves, and you'll set number five uh, jig brake. I'm probably gonna have to borrow a wrench. Mm -hmm. well, I have to have I think that's a seven eight. Two piece jake brakes. You got this part of your lever here over one exhaust valve, and you've got another lever on your other exhaust valve with an adjustment nut on it. And then this adjustment nut sets the height for this side. Your smaller adjustment nut sets the height for this side. Um, what I normally do is set this jake brake first with the big nut and the big adjuster, and then I will go to the other side and set the little adjuster and nut last. My experience, my professional opinion, that's the way I believe Detroit says to do it, is the big one first and then the smaller one second. I've been doing it this way ever since I've been running overheads and never had a problem. So there again, keep your pattern, keep your rhythm. And these jakes set to 26 thousandths, same as the exhaust. That one is actually good. Get in here to this one. Hair snug, but I can live with it. So we'll bar it around and go to the next one. What you can do here is just put your finger in here on your your intake roller and bar your engine around until you feel that uh, intake set start opening and on, it's supposed to be on four i'll edit that part out So now we'll set three. Jake. And that one looks a little bit tighter or both of those look a little tighter is because that's actually a 27 thousandths when you're gauge.
filler gauge in the hole some more. We'll check number six back here. Number six is real loose. Side here just to make sure nothing changed. We're good there. Side loose. This one. Oh, we need socket. Okay, but 
that one's tighter than I like. tricky to get in.
All right, guys, he went through the circle again. We got all of the jakes adjusted. Now, there's nothing worse than getting done with all your valves and all your jakes. You're taking your time. You got everything set right. You get in a hurry. Put your valve cover on. All right, I'm done. I'm ready to fire it up. When you fire it up, you got to check engine light on. Well, I didn't have a check engine light before. So if you've got access to a computer, you plug it up, you've got auxiliary three, four, and five active for check, brake, low, medium, and high open circuit. Here's why. Forgot to plug your jake brake solenoids back up. Don't forget that. Because then you gotta pull the valve cover back off to plug them up. So we're gonna hook these dudes up right now. You ain't gotta get He-Man on it, it's good and snug. But it will break. Just a little old machine screw there, it holds them down. You also, while you're up here, doing your overhead and stuff. No, don't do that. That gives you cardio when you drop your screwdriver in the floor. Oh yeah, good cardio. Good for the heart. Good for the heart, good for the legs. But also, when you're hooking the jake brake solenoids back up, we'll make sure they're not gonna catch on any of the valves. Make sure they're zip tied over here out of the way to your spacer bars for your jakes. Check your other injector harness. Make sure it's not pinched or anything down the length of the rocker box. Just uh, have a good look, see while you're up here. Make sure nothing in the way gonna cause you problems later on down the road. I can't imagine why you drop that screwdriver. It ain't like it's greasy or nothing. Yeah, it ain't got a wool or nothing on it. start all my bolts by hand. Just trust me, it's not any fun trying to helicoil one of these valve covers on top of the engine. <laughs> yeah, the impact, it don't know if it's crossed over or not. It ain't it no just, feel. It just knows two directions.
um, there you see uh, Dr. Matthew, the Detroit doctor, showed you how to do an overhead on a 60 series Detroit. Hopefully you guys picked up a few pointers, maybe learned something. Uh, I want to thank Matthew Cox for coming up here and hooking us up today. Like always guys, if you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe down there below. If you're not subscribed to Matthew Cox, well, that's your own fault. Crawl out of that rock, go over there and look his channel up because this is what you get. You guys have a great one and we'll catch you next time.